the spaghetti slipped from my fork, splattering red sauce across the pristine white tablecloth. I stared at the stain, my appetite vanishing as quickly as my husband's affection seemed to have. For God's sake, Mia, Adam snapped, his blue eyes flashing with irritation. Can't you eat without making a mess? I blinked, taken aback by the harshness in his voice. I'm sorry I didn't mean to. Save it, he cut me off, dabbing at his shirt with a napkin. This is why I can't take you anywhere nice anymore. Our children, Laura and David, exchanged uncomfortable glances across the table. Laura, ever the peacemaker at twenty-two, cleared her throat. Dad, it was just an accident. No big deal, right? Adam's jaw clenched. Your mother should know better by now. She's not a child. I felt my cheeks burn with embarrassment and confusion. This wasn't like Adam at all. Sure, we'd had our ups and downs over the years, but he'd never spoken to me with such disdain before, especially not in front of the kids. David, my sensitive seventeen-year-old, pushed his chair back abruptly. I'm not hungry anymore, he muttered, avoiding eye contact. Sit down, Adam ordered. We're having a family dinner, and you'll stay until we're finished. I found my voice at last. Adam, what's gotten into you? It was an accident, and you're acting like I committed a crime. He fixed me with a cold stare. Maybe if you put as much effort into your cooking as you do into making excuses, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Laura gasped. Dad, I felt as though I'd been slapped. Adam had always praised my cooking, even on my off days. This sudden change in attitude was more than just a bad mood. Something was seriously wrong. I think we're all done here, I said quietly, standing up. Kids, why don't you go watch TV in the living room? Your father and I need to talk. As soon as Laura and David left, I turned to Adam. What the hell is going on with you? He leaned back in his chair, a smirk playing at the corners of his mouth. Nothing's going on, Mia. I'm just tired of pretending everything's fine when it's clearly not. Pretending? I echoed, my heart racing. What are you talking about? Adam stood up, towering over me. Face it, Mia. You've let yourself go. The house is a mess. Your cooking is subpar at best, and you've become... boring. He spat out the last word like it was poison. I felt as though the floor was tilting beneath my feet. Adam, where is this coming from? If you're unhappy, we can talk about it. We can go to counseling. Work on. He laughed, a harsh, mirthless sound that sent chills down my spine. Counseling? Please. It's too late for that, Mia. I've found someone who actually knows how to keep a man interested. The words hit me like a physical blow. I stumbled back, gripping the edge of the table for support. You're... you're having an affair? Adam's eyes gleamed with a cruel satisfaction I'd never seen before. Affairs are for cowards who can't commit. I'm leaving you, Mia. I've found someone who makes me feel alive again. I couldn't breathe. The room was spinning, and I felt like I might be sick. How long? I managed to choke out. Long enough to know it's the real deal, he replied, grabbing his jacket from the back of his chair. I'll be back for my things tomorrow. Don't bother trying to change my mind. It's over. As Adam strode towards the front door, I found myself following him, desperation clawing at my insides. Adam, please, I begged. Think about the kids. We can work this out. I know we can. He paused with his hand on the doorknob, turning to face me one last time. The kids will understand eventually. They deserve to see their father happy. With that, he was gone, leaving me standing in the doorway, my world crumbling around me. I could hear Laura and David's muffled voices from the living room, no doubt wondering what was happening. How was I going to tell them? How could I possibly explain that their father just walked out on us without a backward glance? As I sank to the floor, tears finally spilling down my cheeks, one thought burned through the fog of shock and pain. This isn't over, Adam. Not by a long shot. The silence in our house was deafening. It had been a week since Adam's dramatic exit, and the tension hung in the air like a heavy fog. I stood at the kitchen counter, mechanically spreading peanut butter on bread for David's lunch, when Laura's voice startled me. Mom, we need to talk about Dad. I turned to face my daughter, her eyes red-rimmed from nights of crying. What about him, sweetheart? Laura twisted her hands nervously. He... he wants us to meet someone, a woman named Kate. The knife clattered to the floor, splattering peanut butter across the tiles. He what? I'm sorry, Mom, Laura whispered. I didn't want to upset you, but David and I thought you should know. I gripped the counter, my knuckles turning white. 
When did he tell you this? Last night. He called us both separately. Laura's voice cracked. Mom, I don't want to meet her. I don't want any of this. I pulled my daughter into a fierce hug, feeling her body shake with sobs. You don't have to do anything you're not comfortable with, Laura. I promise. Just then, David shuffled into the kitchen, his eyes downcast. I guess Laura told you, he muttered. I reached out to include him in our embrace, but he flinched away. David, honey, talk to me. How are you feeling about all this? His head snapped up, eyes blazing with anger. How am I feeling? I'm feeling like Dad's a lying, cheating bastard who doesn't give a damn about any of us. David, Laura gasped. No, let him speak, I said quietly. We all need to be honest about our feelings right now. David's fists clenched at his sides. I hate him, Mom. I hate what he's doing to us, and I hate that he expects us to plus to play happy families with his— his whore! The venom in his voice shocked me, but before I could respond, the doorbell rang. We all froze, staring at each other in confusion. I'll get it, I said, smoothing down my hair and taking a deep breath. I opened the door to find Adam standing there, looking annoyingly put together in a crisp suit. Mia, he said coolly. We need to talk. About what? I snapped. About how you're trying to force our children to meet your mistress? Adam's eyes narrowed. Kate is not my mistress. I was about to say she's my partner, and yes, I want our kids to meet her. It's time to move forward. I laughed bitterly. Move forward. It's been a week, Adam. A week since you blew up our entire lives. Mom? David's voice came from behind me. What's he doing here? Adam tried to peer around me. David, son, I... Don't call me that. David shouted, pushing past me to confront his father. You don't get to walk out on us and then act like everything's normal. Laura appeared in the doorway, her face pale. Dad, please just go. We're not ready for this. I saw a flicker of pain cross Adam's face, quickly replaced by a mask of indifference. I'm sorry you feel that way, but Kate and I are starting a life together, and I want you to be part of it. A life together? I echoed, disbelief coloring my voice. Adam, what aren't you telling us? He shifted uncomfortably, avoiding my gaze. Kate's pregnant. We're having a baby. The world seemed to tilt on its axis. I heard Laura's sharp intake of breath and David's muttered curse. Get out, I whispered, my voice trembling with rage. Get out of our house, Adam. Now. He opened his mouth to argue, but something in my expression must have warned him off. With a final, regretful look at our children, he turned and walked away. I slammed the door shut, leaning against it as my legs threatened to give way. Laura and David stood frozen, shock etched on their young faces. Mom? Laura's voice was small, childlike. What do we do now? I straightened up, squaring my shoulders. Now, we fight. Your father might think he can replace us with his new family, but he's about to learn how wrong he is. As I pulled my children close, a steely resolve settled over me. Adam had no idea what he'd unleashed. This war was just beginning, and I intended to win. I never thought I'd find myself skulking around the parking lot of a seedy motel, but desperate times call for desperate measures. My hands shook as I gripped my phone, ready to document whatever sordid scene awaited me. Mom, are you sure about this? Laura's voice crackled through my earpiece. Maybe we should just go home. I need to know, sweetheart, I whispered back. I need to see her face. Just then, a sleek black car pulled into the lot. My heart raced as Adam stepped out, looking furtively around before opening the passenger door. A leggy blonde emerged, her hand resting possessively on my husband's arm. I raised my phone, zooming in as they walked towards a room. The woman turned, and I got my first clear look at Kate's face. She was beautiful, yes, but there was a hardness to her features that made my skin crawl. Oh, my God. Laura gasped in my ear. Mom. Mom, that's Mrs. Holloway, Ethan's mom from my high school. The revelation hit me like a punch to the gut. Not only was Adam cheating, but he was doing it with someone from our community, someone our children knew. I was so stunned that I almost missed the third person exiting the car. A lanky teenage boy, his face a mirror image of his mother's, sauntered after Adam and Kate. Ethan, I breathed, pieces falling into place. Laura, honey, I think we've stumbled onto something bigger than we realized. Before Laura could respond, a hand clamped down on my shoulder. I whirled around, coming face to face with a security guard. Ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to leave the premises, he said gruffly. I... I was just... I stammered, trying to hide my phone. The guard's eyes narrowed. 
Were you taking pictures? That's a violation of our guests' privacy. No, I... Mom? David's voice rang out across the parking lot. I turned to see my son striding towards us, his face a mask of fury. What the hell is going on? The commotion drew attention from the motel room. The door opened, and Adam stepped out, his eyes widening in shock as he took in the scene. Mia? he called, his voice a mixture of anger and disbelief. What are you doing here? I straightened my spine, meeting his gaze defiantly. I could ask you the same thing, Adam. Planning a little family getaway with your mistress and her son? Kate appeared in the doorway, her arms snaking around Adam's waist. Is this your ex? she purred. Honey, I thought you said she wouldn't be a problem. Ex? I sputtered. We're still very much married, you homewrecker. David lunged forward, his fists clenched. You bastard! he shouted at Adam. How could you do this to us? The security guard stepped between us, his hand on his radio. That's enough. All of you, clear out now, or I'm calling the police. Adam held up his hands placatingly. There's no need for that. We're leaving. He turned to Kate and Ethan. Get in the car. Now. As they hurried away, Adam approached me, his voice low and menacing. This isn't over, Mia. You had no right to come here and make a scene. I laughed bitterly. No right? You destroyed our family, Adam. You don't get to dictate my rights anymore. He leaned in close, his breath hot on my ear. Watch yourself. What? You have no idea what you're dealing with. With that, he strode off, leaving me trembling with a mixture of rage and fear. David put his arm around me, guiding me towards our car. Mom, what did he say to you? I shook my head, unable to speak. As we drove away, Laura's voice came through the earpiece, small and frightened. Mom, are you okay? What happened? I gripped the steering wheel, my knuckles white. I don't know, sweetheart, but I think we've just scratched the surface of whatever Adam's involved in. And I'm not stopping until I uncover the truth, no matter how ugly it might be. As we pulled onto the highway, I couldn't shake the feeling that our lives had just taken a dangerous turn. Whatever game Adam was playing, the stakes were higher than I could have imagined. And I was determined to win, for my children's sake and my own. I stared at the stack of papers on my kitchen table, each one a damning piece of evidence against Adam. Bank statements, phone records, even surveillance photos, they all painted a picture of a man living a double life. My hands trembled as I reached for my phone, dialing the number I'd been avoiding for days. Mia? Elaine's voice was warm with concern. How are you holding up? I took a shaky breath. I need your help, Elaine. It's worse than we thought. An hour later, Elaine sat across from me, her eyes wide as she poured over the documents. Oh, Mia, she whispered. This is... I don't even know what to say. Say you'll help me nail this bastard to the wall, I replied, surprised by the venom in my own voice. Elaine reached across the table, squeezing my hand. Of course I will. But, Mia, have you considered what this might do to Laura and David? They're already struggling. As if on cue, the front door slammed, and David stormed into the kitchen. His eyes were red-rimmed, his clothes disheveled. Mom, he slurred, I need to talk to you. My heart sank as I realized my son was drunk. David, what happened? Where's Laura? He stumbled, catching himself on the counter. She's fine, she's with her boyfriend. But me, I'm not fine, Mom. I ran into Dad today. Elaine stood up, gathering the papers quickly. I should go. Call me later, Mia. As soon as she left, I turned to David. What do you mean you ran into Dad? Where? David laughed bitterly. At the jewelry store, he was buying a ring, Mom, a fucking engagement ring for that homewrecker. The room spun, and I gripped the edge of the table to steady myself. An engagement ring? But we're not even divorced yet. Yeah, well, I guess he doesn't care about that, David spat. He saw me there, you know. Tried to explain, said he was going to tell us soon, as if that makes it okay. I pulled David into a hug, feeling his body shake with sobs. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I'm so, so sorry. Just then, my phone buzzed with a text. It was from an unknown number, but the message made my blood run cold. Back off, Mia. You have no idea what you're dealing with. For your kid's sake, let it go. I showed the text to David, watching his face contort with rage. That's it, he growled. I'm done playing nice. We need to destroy him, Mom. David, no, I said firmly. We're not stooping to his level. We're going to do this the right way. He pulled away from me, his eyes blazing. The right way? Are you kidding me? After everything he's done? Before I could respond, the doorbell rang. We both froze. 
staring at each other in confusion. I approached the door cautiously, peering through the peephole. My heart nearly stopped. It was Kate. I opened the door slowly, stealing myself. What are you doing here? Kate's perfect makeup couldn't hide the fear in her eyes. Mia, please. I need your help. Adam, he's not who you think he is. He's not who I thought he was, either. David appeared behind me, his voice dripping with sarcasm. Oh, this should be good. What did Daddy Dearest break your heart to? Kate flinched. It's not like that. Please, just hear me out. Adam's involved in something dangerous. I think... I think he might hurt someone. My mind raced. Adam's threatening words at the motel echoing in my ears. I looked at David, saw the conflict on his face, then back at Kate. In that moment, I knew I had a choice to make. I could turn Kate away, continue my plan for revenge, and potentially put my family at risk. Or I could listen, possibly uncover the truth, and maybe, just maybe, find a way to protect everyone I loved. Taking a deep breath, I stepped aside. Come in, Kate. Tell us everything. As she crossed the threshold, I couldn't shake the feeling that our lives were about to change irrevocably. Whatever Adam was involved in, whatever secrets Kate was about to reveal, I knew one thing for certain. There was no turning back now. The living room felt suffocating as Kate's words hung in the air. My mind reeled, trying to process the bombshell she'd just dropped. Money laundering? I repeated, my voice barely above a whisper. Adam's involved in money laundering? Kate nodded, her eyes darting nervously between David and me. It's worse than that, Mia. He's in deep with some dangerous people. I didn't know at first, I swear. But when I found out— She trailed off, her hands shaking. David paced the room, his earlier drunkenness seemingly evaporated. This is insane. Dad's a lot of things. But a criminal? I don't buy it. I wanted to agree with him, to dismiss Kate's claims as lies from a desperate woman. But deep down, a part of me knew it made sense. The unexplained late nights, the secretive phone calls, the sudden influx of cash. Why are you telling us this now? I asked Kate, my voice steadier than I felt. She took a deep breath. Because I'm scared, Mia. For myself, for Ethan, and for your family, too. Adam's not the man I thought he was. He's become cold, calculating. When I confronted him about the illegal activities, he threatened me. Said if I breathed a word to anyone, he'd make sure Ethan and I disappeared. The room fell silent, the gravity of the situation settling over us like a heavy blanket. I looked at David, saw the conflict and fear in his eyes, and knew I had to be strong for both my children. We need to call Laura, I said, reaching for my phone. She needs to hear this, too. As if on cue, the front door burst open, and Laura stumbled in, her face streaked with tears. Mom, she cried. Dad's here, he's outside, and he's furious. My heart raced as I rushed to the window. Sure enough, Adam's car was parked haphazardly in the driveway, and he was storming towards the house. Kate, take David and Laura upstairs, I ordered, surprising myself with the authority in my voice. Lock yourselves in the bedroom, and don't come out until I say it's safe. Mom, no way, David protested. I'm not leaving you alone with him. I cupped his face in my hands. David, listen to me. Your father may be a lot of things, but he won't hurt me. I need you to protect your sister and Kate. Can you do that for me? He nodded reluctantly, ushering the others upstairs just as Adam pounded on the door. I took a deep breath, stealing myself before opening it. Adam burst in, his face contorted with rage. Where is she? He snarled. Where's Kate? She's not here, Adam. I lied smoothly. What's going on? Why are you so worked up? He grabbed my arm, his grip painfully tight. Don't play dumb with me, Mia. I know she came here. What did she tell you? I wrenched my arm free, anger overriding my fear. She told us everything, Adam. The money laundering, the threats. How could you do this to our family? Adam's face paled, then flushed with fury. You have no idea what you're dealing with, Mia. This is bigger than you, bigger than all of us. If you know what's good for you and the kids, you'll forget everything Kate said and stay out of it. Or what, I challenged, my voice rising. You'll make us disappear, too? For a moment, I saw a flicker of the man I once loved in Adam's eyes. Regret, fear, maybe even a hint of shame. But it vanished quickly, replaced by cold determination. This is your last warning, Mia, he said, his voice low and menacing. Stay out of my business, or I can't guarantee your safety. Any of you. As he turned to leave, I called out, It's too late, Adam. I've already contacted a lawyer. I'm filing for divorce. He froze, his hand on the doorknob. 
Without turning around, he said, You have no idea what you've just done. The door slammed behind him and I sank to the floor, my legs no longer able to support me. Upstairs I could hear muffled sobs and whispered conversations. In that moment, I knew our lives would never be the same. Adam had made his choice, and now I had to make mine. As I climbed the stairs to comfort my children and face an uncertain future, one thought burned in my mind. I would protect my family, no matter the cost. Six months. It felt like a lifetime since Adam had walked out, leaving our family in shambles. I'd spent every waking moment rebuilding our lives, piece by painstaking piece. The divorce proceedings were underway, and I'd managed to secure a restraining order against Adam after his threats. Life was far from perfect, but we were surviving. Until today. The pounding on the front door jolted me awake. I stumbled downstairs, my heart racing as I peered through the peephole. Adam stood there, his face a mask of fury, with Kate and a sullen-looking Ethan behind him. "'Open the damn door, Mia!' Adam shouted. "'We need to talk!' I steeled myself, opening the door just enough to speak through the gap. "'You're violating the restraining order, Adam. Leave now or I'm calling the police!' He laughed, a harsh, bitter sound. "'Police? You think I'm afraid of the police? Open the door or I'll break it down!' "'Mom?' Laura's voice came from behind me, trembling with fear. "'What's going on?' I turned to see both my children at the foot of the stairs, their faces pale with shock. Before I could respond, Adam shoved the door open, sending me stumbling backward. "'This is our house now,' he snarled, gesturing to Kate and Ethan. "'Pack your bags. You're leaving.' David stepped forward, his fists clenched. "'Like hell we are. This is our home, Dad. You can't just—' Adam's hand shot out, grabbing David by the collar. "'I can do whatever I want, boy. I made this family, and I can break it just as easily. Let him go!' I screamed, clawing at Adam's arm. He shoved me away, and I crashed into the side table, sending a vase shattering to the floor. Laura rushed to help me up, while Kate stood in the doorway. Her face a mixture of triumph and unease. Ethan hung back, looking like he wanted to be anywhere but here. As I struggled to my feet, a wave of dizziness washed over me. The room spun, and I clutched at Laura for support. Mom? she cried, her voice sounding far away. Mom, what's wrong? I tried to focus, to push through the fog descending on my mind. I had to protect my children, had to stand up to Adam, but my body was betraying me, my legs giving way beneath me. "'What's the matter, Mia?' Adam sneered. "'Can't handle the pressure?' As I sank to the floor, I saw a flicker of concern cross his face. "'Good. He didn't know. None of them knew. You want to know what's wrong, Adam? I managed to gasp out. I'm dying. Stage four pancreatic cancer. The doctors gave me six months to live. Three months ago.' The room fell silent, save for Laura's choked sob. Adam's face drained of color, his grip on David loosening. "'You're lying,' Kate whispered, but there was doubt in her voice. I laughed weakly. "'Why would I lie about this? You want the house so badly, Adam? Fine. Take it, but know that every moment you spend here will be haunted by the memory of the family you destroyed, the wife you left to die alone.' Adam staggered back as if I'd struck him. "'Mia, I—' "'I didn't know.' Why didn't you tell me? Would it have mattered? I spat. You made your choice, Adam. You chose your new family over us. Well, congratulations. You got what you wanted. David knelt beside me, tears streaming down his face. Mom, why didn't you tell us? I reached up to cup his cheek. I wanted to protect you, to give you time to heal without worrying about me. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. As my vision began to blur, I saw Adam move towards me, his face a mask of anguish and regret. But it was too late. The damage was done, and there was no going back. My last conscious thought before darkness claimed me was a silent prayer. Let my children find the strength to forgive, even if I couldn't. Let them build a life free from the bitterness that had consumed their father and me. And as the world faded away, I felt a strange sense of peace. Whatever happened next, I knew my fight was finally over. The harsh fluorescent lights of the hospital room buzzed overhead as I slowly regained consciousness. The steady beep of monitors filled the air, a grim reminder of my fragile state. As my eyes adjusted, I saw Laura and David huddled together on a small couch, their faces etched with worry and exhaustion. Mom? Laura's voice cracked as she noticed my stirring. You're awake. David rushed to my bedside, grasping my hand. We were so scared, Mom, the doctor said. I squeezed his hand weakly. 
I know, sweetheart. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. Before they could respond, the door burst open. Adam strode in, his face a storm of emotions, anger, fear, and something that looked suspiciously like guilt. What the hell were you thinking, Mia? He demanded. Keeping your condition a secret? Do you have any idea what you've put the kids through? I laughed bitterly, wincing at the pain it caused. Oh, that's rich coming from you, Adam. Suddenly you care about what the kids are going through? Laura stepped between us. Stop it, both of you. This isn't helping anyone. Just then, a commotion erupted in the hallway. Kate's voice rang out, shrill and panicked. You can't do this. We haven't done anything wrong. Two police officers entered the room, their faces grim. Adam Thompson, one of them asked. We need you to come with us. Adam's face drained of color. What's going on? The officer produced a warrant. We have evidence linking you to a major money laundering operation. You're under arrest. The room exploded into chaos. David lunged at Adam, shouting accusations. Laura tried to hold him back, tears streaming down her face. And through it all, I lay there, feeling as though I was watching a movie of someone else's life falling apart. As the officers handcuffed Adam, Kate burst into the room, Ethan trailing behind her. This is all your fault, she screamed at me. You couldn't just let us be happy, could you? I found strength I didn't know I had, pushing myself up in the bed. Happy? You call destroying a family happy? You're both delusional. Adam turned to me, his eyes pleading. Mia, please, you have to tell them this is a mistake. I did it for us, for our family. The irony of his words hit me like a physical blow. Our family? You gave up the right to call us that when you walked out on us, Adam. As the officers led Adam away, Kate collapsed into a chair, sobbing. Ethan stood awkwardly by the door, just looking lost and confused. In that moment, watching the destruction of not one but two families, I felt a strange sense of calm wash over me. I turned to Laura and David, who stood shell-shocked by my bedside. Listen to me, I said, my voice stronger than I felt. What your father did was wrong, but don't let his mistakes define you. You are both so much stronger than this. David's face crumpled. But Mom, what about you? We can't lose you, too. I reached out to, pulling both my children close. I'm still here, and I'm going to fight this with everything I have, but I need you to promise me something. Anything, Laura whispered. Promise me you'll live your lives fully without bitterness or regret. Don't let what happened here poison your hearts. As they nodded, tears streaming down their faces, I felt a weight lift from my chest. Whatever time I had left, I would spend it healing the wounds that had been inflicted on my family. I looked over at Kate and Ethan, still reeling from the shock of Adam's arrest. Despite everything, I felt a flicker of compassion. You two should go home, I said softly. There's nothing left for you here. As they left, I settled back against my pillows, exhausted but oddly at peace. The road ahead would be difficult, filled with legal battles, medical treatments, and emotional healing, but for the first time in months I felt a glimmer of hope. Whatever happened next I knew one thing for certain. Our story wasn't over yet, and I intended to make every moment count. The courtroom fell silent as I took my seat at the witness stand. My eyes swept across the room, taking in the faces that had become so familiar over the past year. Laura and David, their eyes filled with a mixture of hope and apprehension. Elaine, my rock through this entire ordeal. And finally, Adam, looking pale and defeated in his prison jumpsuit. As I raised my right hand to be sworn in, I caught a glimpse of Kate and Ethan slipping into the back row. Their presence was a stark reminder of how far we'd all come, and how much had changed. Mrs. Thompson, the prosecutor began, can you please tell the court about the events leading up to your husband's arrest? I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what was to come. It all started with a family dinner, I said my voice steady, despite the emotions roiling inside me. That was the night I realized the man I had loved for over two decades was no longer the person I thought he was. As I recounted the painful details of Adam's betrayal, his coldness towards our children, and the shocking revelation of his criminal activities, I felt a weight lifting from my shoulders. For so long I had carried the burden of his secrets, but now, finally, the truth was coming to light. When I described the confrontation at our home, the day Adam and Kate had tried to force us out, I saw Adam flinch. Our eyes met across the courtroom, and for a moment I saw a flicker of the man I had once loved, 
remorseful, ashamed, and utterly broken. And how has this affected your family, Mrs. Thompson? The prosecutor asked. I glanced at Laura and David, my heart swelling with pride. It's been incredibly difficult, I admitted. But it's also shown us how strong we are, both individually and as a family. We've learned to lean on each other, to find joy in the small moments, and to appreciate the time we have together. As I stepped down from the witness stand, I felt a sense of closure washing over me. The divorce papers had been filed months ago, but this, testifying against Adam, laying bare the truth of our shattered marriage, felt like the true end of that chapter of my life. The jury's deliberation was mercifully short. As the foreman read out the guilty verdict on all counts, I heard Kate's muffled sob from the back of the courtroom. Despite everything, I felt a pang of sympathy for her and Ethan. They, too, were victims of Adam's deception. Outside the courthouse, surrounded by my children and Elaine, I felt lighter than I had in years. The cancer treatments had taken their toll, but standing there in the warm sunshine, I was filled with a renewed sense of purpose. Mom, Laura said, squeezing my hand, what happens now? I smiled, pulling both her and David close. Now we live, we heal, we make every moment count. As we walked away from the courthouse, I caught sight of my reflection in a store window. The woman staring back at me was older, wiser, and infinitely stronger than the one who had sat down to that fateful family dinner so long ago. In the months that followed, life took on a new rhythm. There were good days and bad, moments of joy interspersed with the harsh realities of my illness. But through it all, I found a peace I had never known before. I threw myself into creating lasting memories with Laura and David, savoring every laugh, every shared meal, every quiet moment of companionship. I rekindled old friendships and forged new ones, surrounding myself with people who lifted me up and reminded me of the beauty in life. And on quiet evenings, as I sat on my porch watching the sun dip below the horizon, I reflected on the journey that had brought me here. The pain, the betrayal, the fear. It had all led me to this moment of profound gratitude and contentment. I thought of Adam, serving his sentence, and hoped he would find a way to make amends with our children some day. I thought of Kate and Ethan, hoping they had found a path forward as well. But mostly I thought of the future. Uncertain as it was, and felt a sense of excitement I hadn't experienced in years. Whatever time I had left, I was determined to live it fully, with an open heart and a spirit unbowed by the trials I had faced. As the first stars appeared in the twilight sky, I smiled to myself. This wasn't the happily ever after I had once dreamed of, but it was something far more precious. A life lived authentically, with courage and love, in spite of everything. And in the end, that was all that truly mattered—